Well, I came into the market today with one goal. It was to close the day green. And you know what? I did it. Not just by 500 or $600. No, no. I sifted through the trash in the market and I was able to find the one stock that made a huge move. Today, we had SXTC and this raccoon found it. We got a beautiful breakout and a squeeze all the way from 550. Well, the best move was from 550 to 750. And I made $11,000 of profit on it. There was nothing in the market. And then we got this one great opportunity. You know what? It's not uncommon that my biggest green days follow my biggest red days. Biggest red day of the year was yesterday. And now today is the biggest green day of the year. There's something about getting knocked down that makes you just a little bit more focused, ready and willing to jump on something that looks good. But you gotta temper that because you wanna make sure if you're gonna jump in something that it looks really, really good. Today I took a total of, well, I traded, I had four trades in the first 15 minutes and I lost on uh, two of them. I had two losers, two winners. I had profit, but not as much as I wanted. And then we got this big breakout and that was the trade I needed. So we did a, um, a poll of students today uh, in the chat room to see how they did on this one. And I think it was around 80 or 88% that were profitable on this trade, which is awesome. Those are students who have learned the strategy. And for you guys watching on YouTube, I want you to remember you're one strategy away from being a successful trader. Once you learn that one strategy, even if you don't trade every day, you only trade three times a week, four times a week, whatever the case is, you will be consistent because you have your strategy. You mastered it, all right? So get motivated, study up. We're almost at the end of January. It's been a great month. February, coming right around the corner. I wanna make it another really strong month, all right? As usual, any questions, any comments, leave them below, and I'll see you guys back here first thing tomorrow morning, 9, 9, 15, for our pre-market analysis. All right, see you guys then. All right, everyone. Um, well, we'll do our midday recap here. A little bit of a surprising day. Honestly, didn't expect it. Up $10,771.08. Uh, you know, I really had just one goal today. It was to try to finish the day green. Um, and after my first three trades, I was up $558 on CODX. And I thought, well, you know, that's, that's pretty good. Maybe I should just run with that and and be happy with that. And um, well, we ended up getting this big mover. As you can see here, SXTC, uh, this is a Chinese stock. Um, and it went from a low of $4 all the way up to a high of $7.60. It's currently pulling back slowly here. Um, we traded this um, pretty well. This is uh, the survey we did uh, just earlier in the room. Let me just blow this up here. Um, there we go. Um, I asked our students how you did on SXTC and uh, gave them three possible answers. Green, red, or I didn't trade it. And I didn't trade it is totally okay because a lot of times I miss big movers because I don't feel like I can manage my risk on it. It doesn't quite fit into my strategy. So about half of you guys didn't even trade it. You just sat on the sidelines. Uh, the other half traded it and um, of the, you know, 50% or what is this, 52% that traded it, 46% of you guys made money. Um, so that's awesome. That's what I like to see. 8% uh, of you guys didn't make money. And so we got to figure out for you guys what you did wrong. Now, I have a couple of guesses and I'll kind of talk about that during the recap. Uh, some of you guys I saw did uh, even better than me, which is great. Uh, I was uh, pretty aggressive on it, but I could have been uh, more aggressive. So you know, I'm I'm okay with um, with the way I traded it, but in any quick in any case, uh, why don't we start by looking at the uh, pre-market uh, watch list that we had this morning? So uh, today started the same as any other day, uh, doing the the uh, pre-market analysis around 9:15, 9:20. So I'll put this in for 9:15. And this morning we had uh, CODX as our leading gapper. Now this looked a lot to me like. Um, OCX, the stock yesterday that uh, I ended up losing 1200 bucks on, um, you can see how pre-market, it was sort of just grinding up, grinding up, grinding up. By the time the bell rang, it was already up 200%. I mean, like 
really, this thing is up a lot. So up 200%, a pre-market high was uh, 338. All right, so I was watching this for a break of um, the pre-market highs. I, I felt pretty confident that it would break this level and, and make a nice move, but I really wasn't sure. Uh, let me pull up my, um, my P&L so you guys can see it. All right, so there's my P&L here on, um, uh, on the day. So CODX, $558 profit. So on this one, I said, all right, well, you know, I'm, I'm really, I'm not totally sure about it, but it's the only one on the scanners that really looks good. Second one down was EYEN, up 48%, but the pre-market chart was already fading. So that didn't look good. TIS, $1.30 uh, on this one, similar pre-market chart, already kind of stair-stepping down. So that's no good. ESKO, um, this one had an okay pre-market chart, but then it ended up failing just before the open. So that was no good. So, you know, as you kind of look at the scanners, it's like there really wasn't a lot today that looked that great, which was kind of um, disappointing. So the watch list this morning was CODX, watching it long over the pre-market highs. Uh, and then right before the bell, I said, actually, I'm watching it for the first five minute candle to make a new high. That's it. Uh, the high of this current five minute candle here was 529. This one right below here, 529. So when the bell rang, I had a bias to be long for a scalp, expecting a break of 529 and a retest of high of day, which was um, 538. All right, so 538 was the high. Now the bell, so this was the first one on the watch list. Um, I'll go over that trade in a second. EKSO was a maybe. JVA was on the watch list as a maybe. Uh, this one pretty strong yesterday. I did okay on it and it was holding up pretty well in the later part of the day. So I was watching this for continuation over six and I did end up taking a trade on it right here and I lost 900 bucks. Uh, so I'll cover that trade in a second. SXTC wasn't on the watch list this morning. This one I wasn't even looking at. Uh, yeah, David, sorry, yeah. Um, so CODX first trade of the day. All right, so back this up. Um, so here's my one minute chart. I turned off the colored candles this morning. Um, TAS market profile indicators, you can, where's my indicator window? You can t set them so they'll color your candles if you want to. And that I alternate between turning on and off because it can kind of, it's a very different way of looking at the chart. Um, and you, of course you can see the color based on the volume bar. So it's not that you can't see it at all, but um, anyways, I turned that off this morning. I left the boxes on. So CODX, uh, the bell rings and I've got a long bias on and I jump in immediately. I punch uh, an order for um, uh, 3000 shares at 15 and 3000 at 19. So I'm in at 17, that was my average. And the moment I get in, uh, it actually was like 317 by $3. And I started seeing red orders going through at three. And, um, you know, I was really, um, you know, I was really not happy about seeing that. Um, so I thought it was gonna end up being like a $600 loss because I had 6,000 shares. And then boom, it pops up and it hits 23, 24, 25. And so I put my shares on the ask and I start taking profit. I'm out at 23, 26, 28, and 26. So on that trade, I made about $450 with uh, 6,000 shares. So it's not really a big winner. Uh, but then all of a sudden here, boom, it pops up to a high of um, 360. As it squeezes up right here, it hits five, sorry, um, it hits 350. It pulls back for a second. And as it curls back up, I went ahead and jumped in at 340, 346, anticipating the break over the half dollar. It breaks the half dollar and I'm selling at 49. Uh, actually, it hit the half dollar and kind of hesitated. So I sold half at 49 and then I sold more at 57, 57, 57. So as of right there, I was up, uh, let's see, uh, 11, about $1,100. And then I got back in for one more trade right here. I was in at 53 on this one minute pullback and it immediately dropped back down and I lost you know, 500. So I finished the day after three trades on CODX up $558, a couple small trades right out of the gates. And when I'm taking these trades, 
I'm not really looking at the candles that much. I'm mostly looking at this right here. I'm looking at the level two, I'm watching the time and sales. And then, you know, I'll glance over and check the chart because I know the prices I'm interested in. But I'm really focused on, on you know, these levels right here. All right, so um, anyways, I um, had those couple trades there and then I switch over to JVA. JVA, um, I see it coming up here and I, I'm, I pull up the chart. So I pull up the chart, I pull up the level two and I see JVA and I see 599 and $6 and I see green going through and what did I do? I press shift one, shift one, boom, boom. So I'm in it with, um, where is this? Um, oh, JVA, that was actually after the first trade. So I was in it right, um, let's see, where was it? Um, this time was 10, uh, 21. All right, so I'm in it at 10, um, 23 right here. So this is where I got in, 10, 23. So I jump in there, it pops up to 601, it hits a high of 608, and then it drops back down. And so on this one, I stopped out and lost uh, $990. So that was disappointing. And I think this one actually hit um, the high day Momo scanner. Let me just pull this back here for a second. Um, yeah, it hit the scanner at 604, 605, and 608. So on that one, I, I don't know, I just didn't do as well on it. Um, as I would have liked to have, obviously I lost 900 bucks. It just didn't break. And then at this point I was like, well, geez, now this one minute chart looks horrible. The five minute chart looks horrible. I got to just get out. So I got out, took the loss and that was kind of a bummer. I, I really probably should have just left that one alone. I was a little too aggressive on it. Um, but you know, it is what it is. So anyways, that was on that. And then, um, SXTC is an interesting one because this one I wasn't watching uh, earlier in the day, but someone in the room called it out uh, when it was squeezing up here from 410 to 460. They must be using a slightly different scanner, different filters. Um, so it's squeezing up here and I pulled it up and I was like, actually, this is a really interesting daily chart. This stock is a recent IPO. It's only been trading since January 4th and it's a Chinese stock. And we had Craig, which is a Chinese stock, making a pretty big move earlier this morning, up you know, 30, 40%. Uh, we had CCCL popping up for a second, that's also a Chinese stock, so a little bit of strength in Chinese names. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, well, it's interesting, um, but right now I'm just gonna sit and, and watch it. So this is the chart and I'm like, all right, it's interesting, it's interesting. Now, if I go to the one minute chart, you can see right here, this is where it, it finally broke. So right here, I'm watching it, uh, the high is 68. And as soon as I see it break that level, I kind of had it on watch. I knew it had potential because of the daily chart. And so when I saw it break that level, I tried to take a, a starter position, but I only got a partial fill. So then I was like, well, I don't know. Let me just give this a second. Let me see if it's actually gonna hold up. Let's see what it's gonna do. So it pops up to a high of 510 and I ended up adding um, about 8,000 shares or 7,000 shares right in this area here with an average of 486. So I'm in it at 486 and the high was 510. So I'm like, all right, well, you know, 510, I wanna see it break. So when it comes back up on this one minute pullback right here to 510, I went ahead and added. Cause on that one, I'm like, yeah, this thing looks like it's really gonna open up. So where did I add? I added at five, um, at 10, uh, 10, 10, which was actually right here. On this candle, I added at 505. I kept thinking it was gonna break over 510 and it kept not quite breaking. So I added at 505 there and then it ended up at 505 dropping all the way here back down to five to 475. You know, so it was just sort of bouncing in this level, not really opening up, not really working. Where was this? Um, yeah, so then it finally breaks over 510 right here. It breaks 510 and boom, pops up to 527. So now I'm getting a little profit on it, right? There we go, up to a high of 547. 547, we do a little pullback, do a little pullback. And this is where I started to get pretty aggressive. 
It pulled back here, but it held support at 510. So now in the five minute chart, this is what it's looking like. It popped up, it pulled back, but it's holding the 510 area. So now I'm watching 547. I'm watching and you see how all of a sudden it takes off right there. So I was watching that level, the high was 547. It was basically doing the same thing it was doing right here. A little pullback, a little pullback, and as it squeezes up and breaks through that level, that's where I started to get aggressive. So on that one, I added at 537, 540, 545, 548, 550, 554, these were partial fills, and 559. Trying to get this momentum here, so I jumped right in and I had 14,000 shares. It squeezed up to a high of uh, 581 and is halted on a circuit breaker. It resumes and squeezes all the way up here to $7. So that's where I made the bulk of my profit, was holding 14,000 shares or getting in with 14,000 here and then selling into this squeeze. Then we had a little uh, pullback here, uh, 697. So where was this? Um, so let me pull this up here. Um, we had 697. I actually took a couple scalps on this, even in this move. Um, I added at 650, was selling at 674. Let me, let me just pull this up. Sorry. Um, I'm on two screens here. Okay, so where was this? The high was um, 697 right here. Um, so let's see. Yeah, so right here, so I am, end up adding at 639. Let's actually pull this back to like a 15 second chart. All right, let's go back here. Okay, so it hits a high of 640. So as it pulls back just for a moment, this is where I added right here. Uh, what's the price now? 640, okay. So it pulled back here for just a second, and this is where I added at 630, 639 right there. That order was right here. It squeezes up to 658, and so I sell, take a little profit, 650, 643, 643. It then taps 658. It pulls back, and right here I add again. I get back in on this pullback, adding at 650, 654, 657, adding at 664. Now I'm starting to think it has the potential to go to seven. It squeezes up here to 693, and I'm taking profit at 78, 81, 73, 89. I then add back at 90, looking for the break over seven. That was right here. And it squeezes up to six, uh, 725, 725, and I'm taking profit at 723, 723, 738, 743, and 738. And that ended up being uh, the whole trade. And that's $11,200. So it was pretty crazy. Now, um, so that made up certainly for the loss on, um, what was it, uh, JVA, DXF. Let's look at this for a second. So when a stock first hits my scanner, this one, I already see 200 moving averages at 426. That's probably a little too close. Doesn't look like a former runner. The daily chart doesn't look that interesting. Someone also called out SEAL in the room today. A reverse split stock, and you can see how it kind of popped up here and then dropped down. Only an 800,000 share float, but the upside resistance is a problem. NFEC is another one that I looked at today. I was a second away from pressing the buy button on this right here at 685. I had my order ready to go. I almost pressed it and then I looked away and started focusing on SXTC. So, you know, as it turns out, this was probably the better one to be focusing on, but um, definitely, I mean, it's not even opinion. It just was, but um, some of you guys might've hit NF. Uh, EC as well. So good job there. So anyways, uh, so those are the trades on um, SXTC. So that ends up being a $10,000 green day. And with that, I am, um, you know, reclaiming the losses from yesterday and, uh, you know, back at, at all time highs. So that's certainly nice. Now what I'm going to do here real quick, I'm just gonna take a screenshot of my PL. Um, I just saved these here. So there we go. I'm going to just Click save, save, um, daily gains, 130.19. Okay, now I'm gonna go and switch to um, 
uh, the sim account. So the sim account I keep open um, right now. We've been um, working on testing out this new sim. And starting the day after tomorrow, uh, we're going to be moving, uh, begin moving students over to this new sim. So let me show you. Oh, so let me switch my login. Hang on. Okay. So um, in this, in the sim, I didn't have shares available to borrow um, SXTC with real money. So I was like, all right, well, I can't borrow with real money. That's, I can't short it. That's a bummer. Uh, but I'll go ahead and take a trade in the sim because it's, it's always to me, I guess, just it's worth practicing. So I'm going to practice taking a short on it. So let me show you where I flipped um, short. Um, let's see, SXTC. All right, and I'm just going to close a couple of these windows to make it a little easier for you guys to see. Okay. All right. So here is um, my my short. So let's see. Let me go filter this um, for all orders. All right. So here's the nice thing with this new sim, you guys are going to be practicing on literally the same software that I use every single day when I'm trading Sterling. So um, we're going to be moving all new students. Anyone who is a new student, brand new student as of February 1st, you're automatically going to go onto the new sim. We're no longer going to be putting students onto the old sim. And then through the month of February, we're going to be moving over batches of students onto the new sim. We move the first batch over, make sure they have a good experience, no issues come up, as long as it's all good, we'll move the second batch over, third batch, fourth batch. We've got five batches right now uh, that we're gonna break up uh, the move into. So um, on SXTC, my first short on it was um, this break right here, this breakdown. So as it failed to break over seven, at that point, I was looking at this and I'm like, this thing is extended. I'm all out and I don't think it's, I, I really think it's hit the top. So I went ahead and took, um, let's see, let me pull this back here. There we go. All right, so I shorted um, 55, 55, 51. Now I kind of got a bad fill there, but I was basically shorting the bottom of this little kind of flag and the low was 60. So as it broke that level, I took the short. But then look, it dips down to 35 and I'm like, okay, this is good. And then it curls right back up and boom, blasts through high a day. And so that's where if I had been trading with real money, I would have had to have covered it. I mean, this is just like, it, this is not good when you're short. The front's potentially the front side of a move and it squeezes back up because it looked like it was going to get halted at seven. Um, we'll watch SPI. I'll pull that up in a second. It looked like it was going to get halted going up at 725. It then pulls back for a second and then, you know, boom, up to 740. So for my entry at 655, this thing was a dollar against me. I mean, I had 6,000 shares. I was down 6,000 bucks. I think I had 6,000. One, two, three, four. Oh, no, I guess not. Um, I had 4,000 shares. In any case, down $4,000. And that's how quick it can happen. You know, this thing could have gone to, you know, eight or nine. I mean, you never know. So I should have covered it there, but I was instead focusing on trading the long side, scalping it. And then up here, uh, you see my next short was at 1041. So 1041 is right here. Then as it started to really break down, it, it, it hit 6, 760 and then failed. So short here, new stop is at the high of 760. It then pulls back, pulls back, and I ended up adding um, short at 36 and 45 because I thought it was gonna get halted on a circuit breaker going down. Um, that was, I think, right, where was that? 1045, so yeah, right in here. But that didn't end up happening. Um, it, it popped back up for a second and then it came back down a bit lower. So I ended up covering it at um, 38, 28, and I still have the small size here. So, you know, I, and I'll just take a peek at SPI. So this one is uh, one that we were watching on the daily chart earlier in the week. 
first daily candle to make a new high. Um, I'm I'm not going to trade it, um, but you know you can see how it's breaking out there. So up about 20%, getting a little bit of action. So anyways, SXTC opportunity long and short for sure. Um, bigger move to the long side, um, and this short position really at this point should have just covered the rest of it break even um, at 45 10,000 share buyer there so I guess I'll just cover this here whatever so you know a little bit of profit to the short side but no shares available to borrow what's nice though is being able to go ahead and, and practice so you know in this sim just to uh, let's pull up a different stock here um, SPI for instance I want to get in shift one right that's how fast you can be in. You want to flip short, go the other way. So the high there is um, 52. It's probably going to come back down. But you know, this is how fast you can be trading in it. Just jumping in, jumping out. So you know, that's what we like to see. All right, guys. So that's about it for me. Um, I'm going to finish up here. Got about half an hour before my first one-on-one um, -on -one session with an inner circle student. So I'm gonna go uh, jump over to that and I'll see you guys all back here. First thing, tomorrow morning around 9, 9.15, pre-market analysis. Hopefully we have uh, another good day. Today's gonna be, let's see, it's the 20th day of the year. So plus $10,000, 10K day, that's great. Day 20, day one of the new hot streak. And realistically, the hot streak is still alive. I just happen to have one red day in the middle of this 25-day hot streak. No big deal. All right, be back at it first thing tomorrow morning. I'll see you guys then. Bye, everyone. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Well, I was just working on the dream board for my next home run trade. Hopefully, it comes soon. Until then, make sure you subscribe to get email alerts anytime I go live or upload new videos. Until then, happy surfing.